Hi there, I am Mike Jones from Valent FX, and I am here to introduce you to the FPGA Logibone, which is a low cost, high performance FPGA cape for the Beagle Bone, which I'm entering into the cape contest. Um, so, as you can see, I've got a quick preview of two different designs, um, essentially the same uh, hardware configuration with a bit more expansion, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So what I want to do is just give you a quick presentation, um, hopefully not bore you to death, and then show you uh, the Logibone in action. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of background about where the Logibone came from, um, so that you understand some of the design criteria, um, where it came from, and how we got to the final design that you'll end up seeing. So just quickly, uh, the FPGA Bone was designed as a member of the FPGA Logi family. Um, which uh, basically is designed to simplify FPGA design. Um, there are some main criteria or attributes that um, we tried to design to to make the whole FPGA process from learning to using to designing with um, a little bit easier than what I see it as currently being. Um, and so four of the criteria um, that we're focused on are number one, uh, the need for FPGA beginners to efficiently be able to learn the basics of FPGA design and allow them to migrate to greater complexity FPGA applications. So more and more FPGAs are becoming prevalent and um, the complexity of FPGAs is it's not trivial and it, it's a bit of learning. So uh, what we've tried to do um, with this family is to create an easy path for beginners to get going and learn um, FPGAs. Uh, number two, built-in programming options. So FPGA programmers typically are quite expensive, especially uh, the OEMs from the, the big FPGA companies. So um, in all the Logi designs, we built in a bootloader uh, applications in which you do not need a proprietary JTAP programmer. Um, number three, provides a direct plug-in interface to existing hardware peripherals um, with standards such as the PMOD interface, Arduino shields, SATA interfaces. Um, so one thing that I see is more and more common is a lot of hardware being available but it being difficult to interface with without having to go through the process of soldering, wiring, proto boards, perf boards. Um, and so the objective here is to try to create a plug-and-play platform in which we can directly plug in off-the-shelf components into the Logibone. Um, and lastly, provides direct connection to a uh, popular embedded development platform such as the BeagleBone, Raspberry Pi, or the Arduino. Um, so some very cool uh, platforms available um, with uh, CPUs that are running high performance, uh, running their tasks um, serially. and well, why not add an FPGA capability that directly plugs into that to get the functionality of the serial processing and the parallel processing paradigm of the FPGA? So this slide uh, just focuses on um, how we create that easy pathway for beginners to get going, to learn FPGAs, to get up to speed with the different um, methods of designing and programming um, in, in which you'll get good results in your projects. So uh, this is one of my favorite books the uh, by Pong Chu, FPGA Prototyping by Verilog Examples. There's the same book that is mirrored that has the same example code and VHD. DL examples, and this is how I personally learned. I went through a number of books and found this to be uh, what I thought was the most effective and most efficient means of really learning FPGAs and knowing why um, the examples are doing what they're doing to create functional and uh, high quality designs. So what we ended up doing with the uh, Logibone, this is the Mark 1, um, you can see that we've got an expansion port here which facilitates all of the examples from this book. So the idea is to be able to have the uh, Logi Mark 1 board uh, available in which you can run through the example code from the book, get up to speed, um, learn FPGAs, and then do FPGAs. 
So this is just a quick example of how we are able to simply interface with the FPGA without the need for the JTAG port. So what we have is LPC Cortex-M3 um, on board right here, which acts as a mass storage device in which you drop a bit stream onto it on the PC side, um, talks to the LPC chip, the LPC chip parses the bit file and then uh, correspondingly loads the FPGA and or stores that bit stream file in flash that every time um, you end up rebooting the device or uh, power cycling, uh, the LPC will check to see if there's a new bitstream file. If not, then it's going to load the bitstream file that was currently stored in Flash onto the FPGA. So this is just one of the methods from the Logi family in which we eliminate the, the complicated need for using the JTAG. So this slide uh, just shows how the Logi family um, is able to interface to multiple different hardware uh, interfacing standards that are currently on the market. One frustration that I have is seeing so many available uh, hardware um, expansion boards available for only one platform and so in order to get that uh, hardware expansion board to work on another platform it's going to take a bit of work some uh, custom wiring um, or, or other means of being able to interconnect that and and so what we did with the Logi family is is designed it so that we could um, actually interface to some uh, uh, widely available standards that are currently on the market, low cost, easy to use, uh, wide versatility. So PMODs is one of those. Uh, Digital and Ink, they currently have 59 different PMODs of all different types of plug-in um, capability. So capacitive I.O., digital pod, audio amplifier, and the list just goes on and on. So really easy method to be able to plug directly into um, your FPGA development board and uh, you know have instant access to this hardware um, so as well the Arduino shields a lot of them out there a lot of them available um, but a lot of hardware that isn't able to uh, access it so what we did is, is put an expansion for the Arduino on board um, and as you can see here this is the Logi Bone Slim which uh, has a SATA port which enables the high speed uh, differential signals to be easily uh, expanded from the Logibone. So this slide uh, shows how the Logi family seeks to uh, interface with um, some of the high performance embedded platforms that are out there to combine uh, CPU processing with uh, FPGA processing to really create some very interesting, unique, and high performance applications. Um, so this is the Logi Mark I, um, which is uh, meets the requirements of form factor to interface directly with the BeagleBone um, or the Raspberry Pi or the Arduino. And so what we're able to do is to have a common platform of uh, FPGA um, development that can uh, you know, reach across the spectrum of embedded platforms um, and uh, hopefully uh, accelerate and uh, benefit the design process on those embedded platforms to create some cool applications. So we took the uh, Logi um, design idea with the first version, which was the Logi Mark I, to the New York Maker Faire um, just a few months ago, and lo and behold, it won the Editor's Choice Award, which was uh, very surprising, be bewildering, um, flattering, and, um, you know, it really uh, gave us some motivation to really push this idea and take it a little bit further. And so these are just some of the shows, just the presentation um, and introductory that they uh, posted on Maker Faire. And then a little bit about the uh, Editor's Choice Award, which was given to the FPGA Mark I. So how did all of those slides possibly benefit you? Well, they probably didn't, but you did need to understand where the Logi Bone cape um, idea and uh, attributes came from, and that was from the Logi family attributes in which I just walked you through. So what we did from the uh, Logi Mark I was take that a little bit further and create a very customized version, which um, uh, enables the same attributes to be met and uh, directly interface with the Beagle Bone. Um, so what we did followed the same attributes as what we did with the FPGA Mark I with a couple of different uh, criteria. Um, and one being that we wanted to keep it low cost and maintain high performance if possible. Um, we wanted it to be uh, high performance um, 
and so creating or uh, enabling the high-speed GPMC port uh, between the BeagleBone and the FPGA board. And to maintain this plug-and-play idea of being able to plug in um, to many different standardized platforms of available hardware. And these are the features that we ended up with on the Logibone cape for the BeagleBone. Um, so we uh, have some SRAM or SDRAM. There's a footprint for each. One can be used uh, at a time, um, but some applications benefit for, from uh, SDRAM or from SRAM and vice versa. So pick and choose. Uh, we kept the high-speed functionality of the GPMC bus, and we also kept the spy port on there and some GPIO uh, to talk directly with the FPGA. Um, so for FPGA expansion, um, We've got the low voltage differential signaling, niggling, blah, 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 signaling through the SATA port, um, in which you can uh, offload those LVDS signals to uh, SATA devices or to um, custom expansion boards that implement the LVDS um, SATA interface. Um, so we've got PMOM mo modules that can plug directly into Arduino shields, um, a dime a dozen for those, which can plug into uh, the FPGA board, um, and just enough room for some push buttons and some LEDs. Uh, and so, uh, as well, we, we went a little bit further and expanded some of the extra BeagleBone expansion I.O. to allow um, some of the pins from the BeagleBone that weren't otherwise being used to also plug into uh, some P-Mods um, or an Arduino shield. So the Logi Bone um, was actually designed initially uh, in, in this topology. And so what we have is basic CAPE, SRAM, SDRAM, um, or and the FPGA. Um, all in a cutesy little package here, and this is a block diagram um, showing the basic functionality. So GPMC, SPI, GPO config um, lines uh, which come over here to the FPGA and then we have these expansion ports which uh, directly communicate with the FPGA and we have some onboard peripherals over here as well. Um, and so that is the basic functionality here. The reason I show that is that there are um, two different versions, a slim version which is this version and then we came up with the fat which has a couple more bells and whistles that I will show you and here we have the fat um, so the fat version is essentially everything that we had with the slim version and a little bit more um, and so if we look down at the block diagram here is essentially what we had on the slim version what we've added on the fat is this and and what it is is that um, we've expanded the GPIO directly from the BeagleBone and made them accessible through the CAPE um, PCB and routed them to uh, these expansion ports uh, which offer a wide variety of plug-and-play options. So we thought that, hey, while we're at it, let's add some more functionality to this BeagleBone. Um, so it doesn't actually implement any more functionality on the FPGA side, but added more functionality for the GPIO of the BeagleBone to directly interface with. So we've got three more PMODs for the BeagleBone to interface with, and then we've also added the Arduino shield. Um, so uh, go ahead and have a heyday with those guys. And here we have it. Here is the real life version of the Logibone Slim. Um, we received the prototypes, built them, and are currently testing. Um, so what we see are four different modules that are completely built up, ready to throw on the BeagleBone, and so that's what we have here. Um, currently writing the support code um, to get the communication up and running between the Logibone and the BeagleBone. Um, so, and also writing the support code for the BeagleBone to configure the FPGA. Um, which would eliminate the need for any JTAG communication. Um, we're working on the GPMC drivers for the high uh, bandwidth um, 
communication between the FPGA and the beagle bone and then as well the, the spy communication and in this picture you can see that we've got a couple P mods connected um, a, a USB to UART uh, converter we have an accelerometer here and we just happen to want to throw on a hard drive to save a few bytes of data and what the heck are we going to do with all that hardware well, we have big plans and aspirations to run some fun projects. So upon completion of getting this port code up and running, the communication drivers, um, we hope to move on to running some fun applications such as computer vision, um, possibly some SDR, Bitcoin mining, and quadcopter are all viable candidates to run on this platform. You might ask yourself, is there going to be a downside to all that fun? Well, and the answer is no, there's not. Everything's going to work perfectly. We're going to have some cool applications running and pie in the sky. Well, in reality, we're probably going to hit a couple bumps in the road. But rest assured, we are here to take care of you. We've got uh, currently four members of the Logi team, um, all experts in FPGA design and embedded design, and just love working on this stuff. Um, we're planning on sticking around, uh, providing the support that's necessary to get the software and the drivers running, and as soon as we've got those guys stabilized, planning on pushing forward with some really cool and fun projects, which will all be open source and available to the community um, to uh, create and enjoy and to enhance and, and do some fun things. As well, <laughs> we uh, have hopes to create a, a Logi community um, so that all the users can contribute. Um, there's four of us. Eight would be better. Twelve's better than that. So the more users, the merrier. And so we invite anybody who's interested to come and get involved. Um, you know, if you're, you're uh, up for it, we'll um, get you working on some of the code, some of the support, some of the fun projects. Um, so currently there's four members. Uh, there's Michael Jones, that's me. Um, so I do hardware design, like in uh, designing things. I also work with FPGAs and do embedded development. Jonathan Piot is a uh, uh, specifically a video processing expert. He does some very interesting and cool things um, in the arena of machine vision. And so he's going to be extremely helpful in getting some of these uh, machine vision applications up and running um, on this given uh, platform. Team Cow, he is an embedded genius. Um, he's done some really cool applications in the embedded environment. Also works with FPGAs. Um, it's been a pleasure working with him. And then Brian Wyke, he is an FPGA expert. He does a lot of cool FP, uh, FPGA development in the DSP arena. And um, so as well, he's he's great with the, the drivers. Um, so works with the Arduino, the uh, Bigo Bone and the Raspberry Pi. So between all of us, we hope to uh, make, this, uh, make this happen. So hope you enjoyed. See ya. And you thought you were done with me. Well, actually, I thought I was done with myself, but it turns out there was one more slide, and that is have some FPGA and Logi fun. Um, catch you later. So here is the Logi Bone Slim up and running. Um, you can see that we're blinking some LEDs. We are connected uh, through some of the expansion ports. We've got a mouse connected through a PS2 PMOD. We have a 3-axis accelerometer. And if we so choose, we can swap that out for a USB to UART device. And just in case we didn't have enough memory, how about 256 gigs of storage? Um, so you can see the design. Uh, it's um, nice and snug and quaint um, upon the Beagle board, uh, just itching to find its next project.